over question seven. Um, so with question seven, we want to create uh, or declare and create um, our arrays and then using a loop, we want to assign some values. So 7.1, uh, we want an integer array to hold 50 integers. Um, so if we just look at that part on its own, that's achievable. With these questions, we can split it up into two parts. Um, so we want an integer array with 50 integers. So integer array, let's call it data, is a new int array with 50 spaces. Easy. Um, second part is assign each item a random value between 1 and 6, and that's including 1 and 6. Um, so first we want a loop that goes through our whole array where our loop variable represents the index. So we'll start at index zero. We go for data.length. We can write 50, but it's just good habits to write data.length. And then for each item, I want a random number between one and six. So I can use the random method uh, where the first parameter is the first number and the second one is um, the last one. And remember as well that uh, the first number you give is inclusive, so it's including that number, but the second one is exclusive, so it won't have the number seven uh, because this is returning uh, floats and we want to round them down as integers and so um, our higher numbers, our higher float numbers will be rounded down um, to six. So from numbers one to six, that works. Oh, I've written ARR, it's just habit. Cool, so now I've got uh, an array where each number, or each value is assigned a random number between one um, and seven, not including seven. Um, 7.2, I'm creating another array. So I'll say data. Well, let's not do data, let's do, let's do R this time, since I'll probably write it anyway. So again, I've got an integer array with 50 integers um, and we're populating it again. So it's similar code. I'm going to copy and paste that. But what we're assigning is different uh, and we need to work out some patterns here. So the first item is 10, the second one is 12, third is 14, fourth is 16 and so on. So let's use our table again to work that out. Get my table up. Great. So the first item is 10, second one is 12, 14, 16, and so on. So I'll assume that's 18. Um, okay, so again, two ways to do this question. You can have a variable um, which has a value of 10 and then plus two each time that you go around the loop so that you're increasing by two each time. But I'm sure that we can write this um, in terms of i. We just need to do some trial and error. <clears throat> So, um, what if I did 10 plus 2 times 1? That works. 10 plus 2 times 2. 10 plus 2 times 3. Okay, that looks good. And then this one is 10 plus two times zero. Awesome. So we know we're starting at 10 and each time we're plusing two. Um, so we can relate how much twos we're adding on to our, um, our array index. So if we have a look at our pattern, we've got all of our I variables are what we're multiplying. Um, and then everything else here is consistent. We've got 10 plus two 10 plus 2. Um, and there are other patterns that you can uh, find as well, but this one works well, I think. 10 plus 2 times i. Great. Uh, and that is question 7. Again, there are other ways, um, probably not to do 7.1, but there are other ways to do 7.2. Oh, 
this time I wrote data, last time I wrote R, and this time I wrote data. I just can't get it right. Um, yes, so there's different ways to do 7.2 as long as it works, um, then that's good. But I'd say this is probably one of the more efficient ways because we're using our loop variable rather than creating a new one.